Dear learners, I am Manjit Rangu. Welcome you to the program of Library Information Science at senior secondary level. Last time we discussed about reference sources. Today we will be discussing electronic resources. As you all are aware that internet has drastically changed the way people and institutions function. It has led to tremendous change in the way libraries function and offer services to the users. At present, libraries actively procure, organize, display and issue electronic forms of books, journals, newspapers, theses and dissertations. This is also due to the change in information seeking behavior of the users. The new generation of users prefer online resources as they want all information at the click of mouse. Today we will discuss the concept and importance of e-resources and their advantages and disadvantages. An e-resource is material which requires computer mediation in order to access its contents and make it useful. Both online and offline resources such as CD-ROM falls within the scope of e-resources. The term e-resources refers to all the products which a library provides through a computer network. Electronic resources are also known as online information resources covering bibliographical databases, electronic reference books, search engines for full text books and digital collection of data. They include both bond digital material which has been produced directly online for example e-journals, databases, print resources which have been scanned and digitized. Electronic resources include e-journals, online databases are also owned by the libraries as they own the print material. Ownership of the electronic resources lies with the providers of these resources. Access to the electronic resources may be free via internet or may be available against a fee. Some of the examples of e-resources are magazines, encyclopedias, newspapers, journals or articles published in them. They may be accessed on internet connected devices such as computers, tablets, smartphones etc. Now what are the advantages of e-resources? E-resources may be accessed over the internet. The users may not physically visit the library. This is very useful for the users who reside in remote and far flung areas. The users may download the articles and save them on their PCs. Same resources that is articles or journals may be accessed by unlimited number of users at the same time. E-resources may be accessed from anywhere, anytime as per the convenience of the users. Users may search a large number of resources in one go through a single search interface. E-resources also provide usage statistics which helps the library staff in finding out the usage of the product. Articles, issues of the journals appear on online before the print version is also available. Hypertext format and link of e-resources lead to users to related contents and articles. Electronic resources have audio, video and animation content which is not present in the print format. Subscription of the e-resources helps libraries in saving the space. Now talking about the disadvantages of e-resources. The reader need to have access to internet in order to read electronic resources. If a library cancels or stops subscription to an e-journal, it's not certain that the library will get access to back issues of the journal. Whereas library having printed material certainly has the back issues of the journal in its position. In case of e-books too, if a library stops subscription of the e-book, it is denied to access to the e-book. Whereas the physical copy once bought always remains in the position of the library. Use of e-resources entails reading on the screen, which is a tedious and harmful for the eyes. How we are managing e-resources? First point is selection. Serendipity, that is finding by chance something which is useful and beneficial while surfing the internet. Faculty recommendations, reviewing the electronic journals provided by the libraries. Publishers advertisements comes then. Then comes the acquisition. A library acquires print resources for ownership, but for electronic resources, the libraries simply get license for access rights. Some important activities involved in acquisition of e-resources are determining the price, negotiating with the vendor, completing the license agreement, allocation of the funds, placing the order, 
verifying if the title is accessible, communicating with the vendor if it is not accessible, processing the invoice for the payment. Staffing, the library has to decide if acquisition functions for e-journals will be performed by the regular staff or staff with expertise in dealing with electronic format. In order to acquire and process electronic resources, the staff requires the skill of negotiating license, familiarity with the electronic format. Licensing. License is usually a written contract or agreement between the library and the publisher. An agreement has various aspects like methods of calculating payment, definition of users, restriction on use, archival rights, etc. Licensing agreements are generally written for the vendor's advantage. So the library staff has to be extra careful while negotiating the favorable terms for the library. Budgeting. Libraries usually have a separate budget for procuring e-resources. Cataloging. E-resources are cataloged and details are entered in the library opaque. Some libraries may decide to list them on the website and provide their links. They may not be cataloged then. Maintenance. For e-resources, maintenance is an important issue. Library has staff to maintain e-resources. The staff ensures that the subscription, the staff is entrusted with the responsibility of distributing username, password to the authorized users. In case an e-resource is not accessible and the staff cannot resolve the problem, the same is communicated to the publisher to resolve the problem. Staff training and user education. Staff has to be trained in accessing, browsing and retrieving information from e-resources. Libraries need to conduct user education programs in order to teach the users how to use e-resources and thus promote and enhance the use of e-resources among the users. Categories of e-resources. There are different types of e-resources that is e-journals, e-books, electronic database, e-reports, e-thesis and dissertations, institutional repositories. We'll talk about e-journals first. An e-journal has been defined as a periodical publication which is published in electronic format, usually on the internet. A periodical publication means that it has some periodicity, that is it may be published weekly, fortnightly, monthly, quarterly or annually. The term electronic journal has been used in electronic version of an established print journal like Cell, New Scientist, Scientific American, an e-only journal like Eridan, Dlip, Magazine, an established journal could stop its print version and transfer to e-only format. An electronic journal can be free or free based through annual subscription, licensing or pay per use. Now coming to the disadvantages of the e-journal. It can be accessed from anywhere and anytime. It can be searched non-sequentially using word, keywords. Additional content is provided which may not be available in print. Storage and binding concerns are eliminated. Back issues can be accessed with the current ones. Disadvantages of the e-journals are like we have discussed with the e-resources. That is, we need to have an internet connection. Now we'll be talking about library consortia. Libraries procure subscription to e-journals through consortia in order to save on money. In this consortia approach, libraries form an association or network or cooperative organization to procure and share journals. Some of the examples of consortia which provide access to e-resources are like Delcon Electronic Library Consortium, delcon.gov.in, UGC Infonet Digital Library Consortium, that is www.inflamnet.ac.in. Now coming to ebooks. An ebook is also known as electronic or digital book, is a text and image based publication in digital form. It is produced or published to be read on computer or other digital devices. Ebooks are the digital equivalent of standard printed books. Ebooks are also available in wide variety of formats. Some may be downloaded in full to be read offline 
whereas others may be read online while connected to the internet. Advantages of the ebook, they can be accessed from anywhere, anytime. Readers may make notes, save and print a number of relevant pages. Books may be searched for keywords. Access the video and audio content. The problem of space and storage in libraries is reduced or eliminated. Ebooks also eliminate damage, loss and security concerns. Old titles do not go out of print. Low production, shipping and handling charges are also low. Disadvantages of ebooks: Libraries have to procure more number of license in order to provide their access to more number of users. Ebooks require power or electricity to be accessed. In case there is a power shortage, the users cannot access the book. The publishers use DRM, Digital Rights Management software to control access to ebooks. The limits the availability of the users to share an ebook with others, exceptioning or using an ebook. Ebooks are supplied by different publishers and suppliers. The access models, term, and conditions of the use may differ from publisher to publisher. There are different kinds of suppliers and business models for ebooks in the market. The business models refers to the various options offered by publishers and vendors to sell ebooks to the libraries. The number of users who can use an ebook at the same point of time may vary from publisher to publisher. The ebook open on the first come first served basis. Ebooks are subject to strict copyright laws and digital rights management. Copyright laws allow users to print or copy one chapter or 5% of an ebook, whichever is greater. Most publishers restrict the amount you can print or copy, and some publishers don't allow users to copy or print. Some publishers allow ebooks to be downloaded for a fixed period only. In order to access the ebooks, the users must have the following internet connectivity, up to date internet browser such as Internet Explorer, Chrome, or Firefox, an up to date version of Adobe Acrobat Reader. As most ebooks use PDF files, this is the format in which ebooks are displayed. Ebooks may be read on computer or may be transferred to any other reading device like Kindle, Android, iPad iPhone, Kobo, eBook, Reader, Nook. It is an eBook reader which has been developed by an American book retailer, Brains and Nobles. Sony Reader. The library pays for access to eBooks which are hosted on the third party websites. When a user wants to access an eBook, he downloads a file which automatically expires after some days. It is just like a user visiting a physical library for getting a book issued for a week or two after which the same has to be returned to the library. Some of the examples of suppliers of ebooks is my library m y i l i b r a r y www.mylibrary.com ebre www.ebre.com Springers offer access to more than 88,000 ebooks through Springer link. Libraries can either purchase the entire annual collection or may purchase a number of subject collection as per the requirements. For getting individual titles, libraries have to contact the aggregator or online stores like amazon.com or springer shop at springer.com. Oxford University Press provides access to 8,000 academic monographs from 20 subject areas including humanities, social science, medicines, law. The platform is popularly known as Oxford Scholarship Online. The collection is regularly updated with new titles three times a year. Sources www.oxfordscholarship.com Safari Technical Books Safari provides 8,000 ebooks from over 100 publishers specializing in computer applications, used user and training manuals. www.safaribooksonline.com There may be many ebooks freely available on the internet. Some of them can be Carry, the full text electronic library. Free books, www.e 
dash books dot com au slash free books dot htm internet a classic archives http slash classics dot mit dot edu internet public library www dot ipl dot org it is certain that ebooks will not replace print books in the forthcoming years the users researchers and faculty members may rapidly adopt them as complementary to the print books the users value the convenience and ease of accessibility that ebooks provide it is estimated that in the next few years researchers and faculty members will prefer the electronic version of some books the transition will be faster for research related activities ebooks are appropriate for research purposes or in a search environment where the user needs to locate specific information the user do not read ebooks cover to cover in the traditional sense rather they consult them as a source for locating answers to research questions now we'll be talking about electronic databases the term is used to refer to the collection of records which may have numeric textual or image based data if it is accessible via www it is known as online database before the advent of the internet these online databases were available as cd rom databases a journal database is a collection of journal articles arranged in an individual records which can be searched the database can be bibliographic or full text ones bibliographic databases is a database of bibliographic records it's an organized digital collection of reference to published literature it may be general in nature or it can be particular subject area jgate http jgate.informationindia.co.in is a bibliographic database which provides access to journals literature indexed from 29513 e journals of 9483 publishers with links to full text publisher sites the database is accessible against a fee all the electronic databases provide citations which give the readers basic publication information about the articles or the resources such as titles authors date and resources of publications majority of the database which provide citations also have abstracts which are brief summaries of the articles or resources the users and researchers can learn a lot about the articles just by carefully reading the citation and the abstract this in turn will help the them to decide whether they want to read the full article or not in simple words the abstracts are very popularly used by the researchers as they offer a quick effective means of checking relevance and comparing articles from the voluminous literature available in the particular discipline in certain cases they may offer appropriate substitute for the whole research articles for example abstract on hygiene and communicable diseases ahcd current contents then coming to the full text databases databases which provide full text of journal articles book chapters conference papers are known as full text databases examples are science direct jstor and proquest full text access means that the users can view save or print the full text articles full text articles can be in html or pdf format advantages of the databases are it saves the time of the users in locating the full text of an article meet users expectations by offering the full text or of material they see indexed in secondary articles ensure users to have access to the very latest research contain the full volumes including back issues of a growing number of journals Vile online library is a multidisciplinary full text database of online resources from the field of life health physical and social sciences it provides access to over 4 million articles from 1500 journals over 
11,500 online books, reference works and laboratory works. Some examples are CABI full text www.cabi.org, academic research complete www.ebscohost.com, academic and academic search complete. JSTOR www.jstor.org Project Muse www.muse.jhu.education Now coming to the e-reports. E-report is a document which contains information in a narrative, graphic or tabular form. It is prepared on ad hoc, periodic or regular basis as per the requirements. A report may refer to some specific period or event or subject. It may be communicated to the public orally or in the written form. A report which is available in digital form is known as e-report. Examples are the universities publish annual reports which give an account of the budget, expenditure, activities and achievements. These reports are also made accessible on internet. Like planning commission, government of India publishes report of the various projects initiated and completed. Committees constituted for Accomplishing various tasks, website of Planning Commission of India is www.planningcommission.nic.in Reports E-thesis and dissertations E-thesis or dissertation is a document submitted in support of candidate for an academic degree or professional qualification. It presents works or research undertaken by a student and its results or findings. The user submit thesis and dissertations to the university's institutions in print. Digital form of thesis and dissertations are known as e-thesis and dissertations. The universities are required. The research scholars doing MPhil and PhD in Indian universities are required to submit digital or soft copies of the thesis and dissertations. The libraries are at present digitizing the thesis and dissertations held by them and making them accessible on internet. The collection of digital thesis and dissertations also known as digital repository. The Shob Ganga at the rate Inflimnet Center provides a platform for research students to deposit their PhD thesis, make it available to entire scholarly community in open access. The repository has the availability to capture, index, store, disseminate and preserve e-thesis and dissertation submitted by the researchers. Vidya Nidhi, Indian Digital Library of Electronics. Thesis by University of Mysore. What are the institutional repositories? An institutional repository is an online database which provides access to digital collection of thesis, dissertations, e-prints for online viewing. It provides associated metadata regarding the document that is the name of the student, university name, Year of Graduation, Document Title, Abstract, Keyword. Institutional repositories are also known as digital repositories. The universities and research institutions set up these repositories to collect, organize and showcase the intellectual contribution of their faculty members and scientists. These institutional repositories may also provide access to annual reports, question papers of the past years, reprints of the articles published by the teachers and scientists of the university and institute. Institutional repository known as ePrints at the rate IISE. Thank you very much for watching this program. Hope to see you soon in the next program.